Hey guys, I'm Neil, and welcome to my channel, Neon Black Reviews. So I just got back from the theater. I went this afternoon to see The Devil Conspiracy. Uh, this is a film that I knew absolutely nothing about going in. Uh, and to be honest with you, until yesterday, I didn't even know that it was a movie, much less coming out. But uh, yeah, yesterday I was looking at my phone uh, to see if there was anything playing uh, at the theater that I might want to go see, and uh, saw, well, The Devil Conspiracy. It's a horror film, and as uh, AMC A-list, um, yeah, I get three free passes a week, so why not? So that's what I did this afternoon, was uh, to go see The Devil Conspiracy. So, if you haven't seen this one, which I'm pretty sure you probably haven't, um, the idea behind this one is, I don't know, it's kind, of, it's kind of hard to explain. The description on IMDb is, A cult steals the Shroud of Turin for wicked purposes. So this is a good versus evil type movie. Uh, it starts out um, with a recreation of Lucifer's Fall from Heaven. Uh, it doesn't show the whole war, um, but if you've read the Bible, you know that uh, there was a, a great war in heaven where Lucifer rose up against God, and he was defeated and cast down to earth, all right? So that's where this film kind of starts out, was with him being uh, cast down to earth, and then there, there is some Hollywood embellishment because... Uh, after he falls down to earth, uh, he is followed by the archangel Michael, uh, who basically chains him in hell. Uh, unbreakable chains, he cannot escape, uh, and that is where he has been uh, ever since. Well, I mean, again, if you read the Bible, you know that that is not exactly true, uh, that uh, Lucifer's free to walk around. Yeah, the, the seatbelt light is off, and uh, he is free to move about the cabin. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I don't believe any of that shit, because, I mean, if the devil is actually running around down here, how come we've never seen him? But anyway, I'm not going to get into all of that. Uh, we're going to stay within the, the lore of this movie uh, for the purposes of this review. But anyway, we are now brought into the present where we're introduced to our main character. Uh, let me see what her name is here. Laura. Yeah, that's how much I remember this movie, right? Uh, so, so Laura, she is a non-believer, uh, but anyway, she is going to this uh, exhibit uh, where um, a friend of hers that is a priest, um, and I'm not really sure exactly what Laura's background is, uh, why she would be interested in this thing. I don't know if she's a student um, or uh, likes, uh, you know, art and that kind of thing, uh, but anyway, uh, this uh, this priest that she knows uh, has told her to stop by because he has something interesting that she would like to see. Well, she goes, uh, like I said, to this this showing of the Shroud of Turin, which, uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, it is a burial shroud that has a likeness on it. And uh, those uh, that believe, uh, believe that it was the actual shroud that was used uh, to bury Jesus Christ after he was crucified and that the image uh, that it shows is actually an image of Jesus Christ himself. So that is on display here at this cathedral or art museum. I'm not really sure what it is. Again, there's a lot about this film that the details of it are, are kind of murky as to you know what exactly is going on. Uh, but anyway, she shows up, and it's not the shroud that he wants to show her. It's this sculpture, this big statue um, that is... Um, you know, a, a depiction of Archangel Michael um, defeating Lucifer after his fall. So that's what uh, he she was there to see. And of course, she's super interested in it. She sits there for hours uh, doing hand drawings of it. Uh, it gets kind of late in the evening, and uh, that's when uh, the story actually picks up uh, with what's going on for the rest of the film, which is uh, these people break in and steal the shroud, and in the process, they murder that priest. And, of course, she gets away, and um, 
Well, she doesn't. She ends up being captured by them too, uh, and taken back to this place. And that's when every we're, we're we're I guess told pretty much everything that is going on. So uh, this is a satanic cult. Um, they uh, they have set up shop um, in this church or some other structure that was actually built on the spot where Lucifer fell. And uh, there's a, a biotech company involved. Uh, this very smart scientist has figured out a way to clone actual people from DNA. Uh, and he is uh, able to extract the DNA of Jesus Christ, uh, in which they use to create this fertilized egg that they then insert into Laura um, so that she can give birth to a human clone uh, that has the same DNA as Jesus Christ. So why would a satanic cult want to do that, right? Well, it's because, you know, according to the things that they have learned over the years, because it is their goal to free Lucifer um, from hell, which apparently the gateway to hell is there uh, at this uh, structure that is built over the spot where he fell. Again, you know, don't try to make any sense out of all this. Um, but the, they're they're trying to free him. And the, the way that they think that they can do that is to present him with a human body that he can possess. I, I don't know. I, again, like I, said, like I said, this doesn't make any sense. But anyway, uh, they find out, you know, um, basically because the plot says that they, they do, um, that, that Laura, uh, because of her ancestry or whatever, um, is a perfect match for a human that can actually contain the deity of Lucifer, because that's always been the problem, is that, you know, his uh, his spirit is just too powerful for the average human body. Um, and that's why they want to clone Christ, because he's the only other example in all of human history of a body that could contain a deity because you know supposedly he was the actual son of god in human form so hopefully that made some sort of sense uh, uh, again this is one of those movies where you just kind of got to go with it um and, and not think about it too much because you're going to start to have a whole lot of questions and and I didn't even bother with it because, I mean, mentally, I'm not going to lie, I checked out of this film after about 30 minutes, and uh, it's almost two hours long. The running time is an hour and 51 minutes. So that's the first thing I didn't like about this movie is that it is way too long. Um, from the opening scene, yeah, there, and it's repeated throughout, um, this film makes heavy, heavy, heavy use of CG. Uh, I don't know that there are any practical effects in this film at all. And, you know, when it comes to CG effects, I mean, if we're making a Marvel movie, it's pretty cool, right? You know, to have those big budget special effects, you know, all kinds of stuff that you see on screen that, you know, they really wouldn't be able to do practically. Or if they did, it wouldn't look as, you know, cool and slick as it does in, say, you know, um, an Avengers movie or Iron Man or something like that, but it just simply does not work in a horror movie, and the reason why is because it does not actually look realistic. It may look good, but we know that it's not real. You can tell that it's not real, and a horror film has to be able to hold atmosphere and tension, and seeing some crazy CG special effect is going to just throw that out the window. You can't use CG effectively in a horror film if that is all that you are relying on. You can enhance things, practical effects, and make them effective, but it's very, very hard to have a film that is nothing but CG um, and have it work as a horror film. So that's one of the things that is a big negative about this film is that it is never scary. Um, the other thing about this film, and it's what I think they were trying to do to compensate for the fact that they were doing nothing but CG effects, this film is dark, as in I can't see jack shit dark. Um, and like I said, I think they were trying to compensate and try to give it that creepy, spooky feel, uh, you know, a little bit of atmosphere um, because, you know, a lot of the stuff in this film takes place, uh, you know, in dark buildings uh, down there in hell. 
um, places like that, places that aren't normally light, you know, brightly lit anyway. But I mean, yeah, it just ends up making it to where you can't tell what the hell is going on. There is one scene where our main character, uh, what, what did I say her name was, Laura, uh, and another woman are like in this uh, this courtyard, um, chained to this uh, column there, um, and around the balcony they turn on these spotlights, like eight of them. A lot. Now, I don't know if it was actually eight. Maybe at least six. And you see them turn on like boom, boom, boom. And you get to see the whole thing, right? So you get to see like six or eight spotlights trained on these women. And you still can't see shit. They, it's just like they were using some sort of filter to just take 98% of all the light out of the frame. I mean, it is horribly, horribly dark. Um, so that's another thing that's uh, not good about this film. Um, the, the performances are very lackluster. I was not really impressed with any of these characters. Um, you know, they, they, didn't, uh, uh, they didn't get me behind them. I really didn't care what happened to any of them, to be honest with you. Um, the, the director, uh, Nathan Frankowski, never heard of him. I uh, looked at his filmography briefly. No, didn't see any horror experience there. Same thing with like most of the cast. It's like, you know, these people don't have anything to do with horror, so why are they in this horror film? Um, I don't know. Uh, the other thing that made absolutely no sense to me is, like I said, they murder this priest at the beginning of the film uh, when they come and take the Shroud of Turin. And with his dying breath, he invites the Archangel Michael um, to, to possess his body and use it to stop these people. And I guess Michael happened to be listening at the time, so he takes him up on his offer. And now for the rest of the movie, I'm sitting here wondering, it's like, why the fuck would an Archangel need to take a human body um, to come after the devil? I mean, that makes no sense. Why would he need that? Uh, but again, the, the more you start thinking about what's going on in this film, just the, the worse and worse it gets. I mean, there's just so many questions. Like I said, you got, first of all, you just got inconsistencies with anything uh, from the source material, which should be the Bible, right? Um, yeah, they can't get none of that right uh, again. It, it, th this whole movie is a fucking mess. I mean, it really is. And then you get to the end of the film. Um, it's got a, a very expected ending. Um, they try to throw this smart little twist in there by making it, you know, well, this was God's plan all along, and we fooled the devil. And it's like, why did you have to fool the devil? He was already chained in hell. You dumbasses were the ones that let him out um, or allowed these people to let him out. I mean, you know, that that's, that's the whole thing you get with, you know, just God to begin with is why does God have to solve a problem that he himself let happen because he didn't do anything to stop it to begin with, which we know he could because he's God. Again, yeah, I, I shouldn't watch movies like this uh, because, I mean, like I said, I don't believe none of this shit, so uh, I even have more problems than, you know, an average person might uh, just with the, you know, the plot points and details because, again, it's like, why, why, why? Um, but yeah, this whole movie is a mess. I mean, let's put it this way. It's the second week into, uh, 2023. Uh, this is the second film I've seen in the theater, um, this year, uh, which, you know, that's one of my new year's resolutions is to start getting my ass back to the theater, which again, that's one of the reasons I went to see this today, um, is because, you know, I got a free pass. I can see the movie for free and I'm trying to get myself back out to the theater, uh, hopefully every weekend. We'll see, you know, there's going to be weekends where I can't, obviously. Um, but that was the reason I went to see it. It was a horror movie. It was playing. I went and saw it. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's the second week in uh, 2023, and I would be surprised if I see a worse movie this year than this film. So, yeah. Take my opinion for what it's worth, but I would say avoid this film at all costs. Uh, it did have an interesting premise. I will give you that. This interesting premise that, you know, we've got cloning technology now. We're going to clone Jesus Christ. Um, but it's not the Christians doing it to bring their Savior back, you know, or whatever. Uh, it's being done by Satanists for evil satanic purposes. So, I mean, that's a pretty good setup for a horror film. Um, but if they'd done it with practical effects, with people that actually knew how to make a horror film, 
Um, yeah, and uh, maybe some writers that actually knew how to write a horror film, they could have made a pretty good film out of this premise. So I'm going to give it a little credit for having a, a pretty decent premise, uh, but unfortunately it was completely wasted in this mess of a movie. So uh, my rating for this film is going to be a 2.0 out of 10. Uh, quite possibly the lowest rating I've ever given to any film that I have reviewed on this channel. I do not know if I've ever gone as far as a 2 out of 10. Uh, and the only reason it's getting a 2 out of 10, again, I thought it had an interesting premise. So there you go, guys. That is what I am rating this film. Uh, before you go, don't forget to uh, smash that thumbs up. Uh, that really does help the video out here on YouTube. And, of course, I appreciate that support from you guys. And uh, if you're not a subscriber to Neon Black Reviews, then go ahead and click on that subscribe button while you're smashing that like right down there. Uh, click that bell next to it, turn on those notifications, and that way you'll never miss a review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.